Let's talk. Can I say, I, I um, although I'm, you know, work in television, associated with television, I did work in advertising in the 80s. And, the glory um, days. The glory days. And if you told me I'd always one day be sitting on a platform with John Hegarty, I would have thought, wow, because <laughs> then as now, John was a godlike figure. But I was, I, I was running Talkback Productions at the time, um, which was in a, in a building in, in Percy Street. And we shared the building. From, well, Talkback itself started as a radio advertising company that started by Mel Smith and Griff Rees Jones. But we then started a commercials company called Smith, Jones, Brown and Cassie. And we shared the building with SJBC. And the, the, the cultures, it's kind of a fascinating thing looking back, because it's a long time ago and it's a different world. They were two different worlds. The two different worlds didn't really speak to each other. And there was a very clear pecking order. The, 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 the guys on top were the commercials guys. To some degree, because they shot on 35 mil millimeter film, that made them, that made them, they were filmmakers. Mm. And we were making television programs, mainly shot on tape, mainly shot on one inch videotape. And there was a, to be honest, there was a bit of a snobbery between them. But we were making programs um, like, uh, some pretty good programs. We were making The Day to Day, Alan Partridge, Brass Eye, um, Smack the Pony, stuff like that. Um, but we never really had any contact with the guys upstairs who were, you know, making the sort of thing we've, we've just seen. Um, um, and it fascinates me looking back because the world has changed so completely since then. And television, I would argue, has had to become more competitive. It's had to up its standards. It's had to up its standards partly because we've gone from a world of, what did we have in those days, four channels? BBC One, mm. BBC Two, mm. Channel Four... ITV, I would guess, um, uh, maybe it's starting to spread. So we've gone to about 250 standard uh, channels. And television's got bigger, so we've had to fill them with bigger programmes. We've had to make the production values, you know, come up to the production. In those days, production value was all in, in the commercials. But it's you know, you'd have these amazing Hugh Hudson ads, and then you'd cut to programmes that, they may have been creatively strong, but, but they, were, they were cheap looking on the whole. But it's interesting that um, you'd think in a much more competitive em environment, much m many more hours of airtime to fill, and yet the quality's gone up. You might think, you know, same budgets, spread more thinly, therefore the quality might go down. But actually the opposite appears to have, have happened. You know, the big theme is the flight to quality, the rise in scripted uh, drama, the amount um, writers are being paid in, in television. It, it almost seems slightly counterintuitive. I think that's right. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks that the route to success is to go down and go down market. And I think that's a great thing. You know, I think even 10 years ago, if you'd said where it will be in television is about long form drama, um, drama that's more demanding, uh, take longer. Everybody, everybody assumed for a long time that our attention spans were getting shorter. Uh, and we've sort of proved them wrong. They're, 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 <laughs> they're getting longer. I think pressure of competition has got television to raise its game. But I do think you're making a good point. There's so many channels and so many outlets. Um, if you go, as I do, uh, most years to, to the, the screenings, as they're called in America, in Los Angeles, where the Americans show their pilots, um, yeah, we see the absolute cream of American drama, and we talk about it, we love it, whether it's Game of Thrones or Breaking, Breaking Bad or whatever. Um, uh, it's, there's plenty of mediocrity in American mm. television as well. We, it just doesn't find its way over here. But I think certainly at the top end, we've all had to raise our game. Mm. And I think that's fundamentally the pressure of competition. And is the same equally true of advertising, John? Um, well, no. Um, uh, advertising seems to be pursuing uh, a strategy which lets make the product worse to actually uh, be more effective which I find very confusing. I'm not sure what business book um, people in advertising have read that says, you know, uh, we should make a worse product and therefore uh, be more successful. And as I say, this is not my opinion. This is the opinion of the audience uh, that we appeal to. TGI do a piece of research uh, amongst the uh, uh, viewers and they say that their appreciation of advertising has been going down since about 1990. So Maybe we, it is because the programmes are getting better. No, I think programmes have got better. I think we've always used... I mean, I, you know, I was asked many years ago, uh, should we allow advertising on the BBC? And I was absolutely against it because you know, we always loved the fact that people could go somewhere where there was no advertising. So therefore, you had to make the advertising better for them to stay and watch. 
Um, but I think the industry, our industry, has lost faith in television. I think it's lost faith in the big, bold uh, uh, idea. Um, we just saw lots of examples here of, of uh, uh, campaigns where they had a big, bold idea that drove everything through all the different uh, 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 media that you can now use. And I think our industry has, 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 has lost its courage. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm deeply upset by that. And I think, you know, too many people in our industry who lead it are either accountants or whatever it might be. And uh, I think for a creative industry, that's a tragedy. You know, I don't think any other creative industry, you know, would you find accountants being the sort of the people running it and driving it. I don't know about architecture, but I think, you know, Richard Rogers is probably one of the most successful people and uh, Mick Jagger is one of the most successful singers songwriters. Um, in our industry, the most successful or the, 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 the most prominent people are people who have nothing to do with creativity. And I think mm. we have lost the power of creativity. We've lost the courage of creativity to drive our business forward. And I think it's a huge tragedy. I really, really do. I mean, people often say to me, does uh, advertising have a future? It's one of those stupid questions you get asked. You have to answer it stupid it. questions. It has a phenomenal future if it puts creativity at its heart. Mm. If it puts technology at its heart, it will fail because somebody else will come out with another bit of technology and you'll be outsmarted. And I think, you know, it, it, you know listening to, to what Peter's saying, and that, you know, I think that, that TV's raised its game because it suddenly said, why don't we have a better script? You know, what, what about a better script is a good idea? And I've sat in unbelievable number of business client meetings where the client's been looking at kind of you know what's wrong with their, their market share and brands going down and they talk about distribution and that and I sometimes have to say have you tried making a better product um, and it's a very simple concept have you tried making a better product uh, somebody talked about Tesco and, and said why do people you know uh, have a go at Tesco when it went to America because it was fucking putting horse meat into its, its lasagna that's why you know um, people didn't like it you know, um, you know, so they had a go at them uh, I don't think it's you know so I, I think the whole debate here everything comes back to creativity we talked about why isn't Britain got more companies that are succeeding because creative people are not at the top of those companies that what uh, the people that are at the top of them are, are bean counters. You know, we talked about William Lyon, who was the guy who was driving Jaguar. I mean, it, you know, now Jaguar have got back because it's got creative people. Sorry, your mic has fallen down, I think. Oh, Jack. my mic's fallen yes. down. Nobody can hear we a word I've said. We want everybody to hear your pearls of wisdom. Oh, God, it's all disappeared. Do you want me to summarise what you just said? <laughs> I think my <laughs> mic's working quite well. <laughs> it's not good news for accountants, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you about that. Um, is, is, isn't it an opportunity for because some brands not every not every brand and business uh, has been selling its soul to the devil has it there have been some amazing examples of uh, you know brands doing really you know long time length hugely emotional mm. and highly effective advertising so it's almost like you know pulling pulling apart from the rest there's a great opportunity yeah. there I mean we've tried to um, uh, in a way pioneer a new way of buying television which is that. You know, the market, the world has changed. It constantly evolves. And I think, I, and I do actually say this is the most exciting time to be in our industry. If only we would come up with some better ideas. And what, one of the things that we've tried doing is having what we call, um, instead of, you know, it's just a commercial, we start a conversation. Start a conversation. Uh, that goes into social media. Social media starts talking about it. Uh, people who haven't seen it go on Facebook and have a look at it. So it's a completely new way, an exciting way of buying mm. television. And we did that with uh, The Guardian, we did that with Yo Valley, we've done that with Bernardo's, uh, uh, St John's Ambulance, and we started a conversation with a really, you know, daring, different, captivating piece of advertising that starts a conversation. And, and that is a great way of using, of using television. And I think we need more... We, I'm going to use that word again, it's called creativity. We need more creativity in not only how what we produce, but also how we view the market as a whole, how we view the media landscape. Okay. Um, can we actually play that now, Akil? Brilliant. Let's, uh, let's have a look at it. 
and uh, ending ending on my favourite. So not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> I like that. I've never That's seen good. that done before. Oh. Cutting the, uh, the yeah. commercials and programmes together. It's interesting, isn't it? How you you you, you instantly know the com you instantly know the programme or you instantly know the spot. And it's about mm. being distinctive. It's about being different. Mm. Um, and we have a real fear of difference, don't we? But yet, it's fundamental to communication. You know, uh, you always think. You know, whenever I was presented with a script and I was, uh, when I was sort of running the creative department, I'd always kind of look at it and go, what's the opening shot? Now imagine you're the director. How could you make that different? How could... So if it's three blokes standing in a pub, I think, well, that's going to be a bit difficult, isn't it? Unless they're hanging upside down or something. And that's, that's different. So I think, you know, you look at that and you realise the power of difference, the mm. power of the image. It's fantastic. Peter, is, it, is it about um, how much is about, you know, distinctiveness and standing out? Is that something that is as important in programming as it is in advertising? Uh, yeah, I think it is. But I, I think there are significant differences. And, and what John was just saying is reminding me of that is that uh, commercials, I think, traditionally has been a director's medium to a mm. much greater degree. And certainly, they go back again to when I was... Um, you know, part of this company, SJ's VC, was always very much about servicing the director. Was the director who, who was top of the tree? Um, television uh, uh, isn't that to the same degree. So, if you think of uh, <coughs> big modern series that are the kind of iconic series of them, take Breaking Bad. I bet you don't know who directed it. Um, mm. You know, Vince Gilligan created and wrote it. Um, Downton Abbey. Your first name will come to your mind is Julian <laughs> Fellows, who wrote it. Mm. Broadchurch, Chris, Chris Chibnall. Chibnall. Um, and the writer showrunner is the is the powerful uh, and you know brilliant figure in modern modern television, mm. and it's the empowering of that individual and saying tell your story over as many hours as you like, um, uh, you know take the audience into this world, um, uh, d d you know d don't give them a resolution anytime too soon. Mm. Uh, that I think has led to, to, to television pushing away at, at what people had seen as boundaries before. Mm. I get the feel. So I was going to get the, uh, the feeling also that television has rediscovered the value of the writer and the idea in the yeah. way that it had perhaps lost it. I mean, if you talk to somebody who goes to work in Hollywood, they would say, you know, uh, the writer gets fired, we just get another one in. You know, yeah, there was yeah. no the writers are low state. They high just pay, go, hi, I mean, get them in. Yeah. They don't like what they do, get them off it. And, and mm. what has happened, it seems to me, in television is that they rediscovered, you're quite right, Vince Gilligan, I know, I know, you know, uh, Aaron Sorkin, you know, we know these people. And that they have a kind of control because they had the idea uh, and they want to drive it and they, want, they understand how to make it work. So the value uh, of putting, you know, we're back to that thing again, of the creative person in the center of it saying this is the idea this is how to drive it you get better product yeah mm. oh, and that doesn't happen to the same degree in advertising is well, it I about think the it, idea I think our, rather uh, than the well writer? i think i think in our, what's happened in our industry is that we become obsessed with technology um because um you know uh, the digital world sort of called advertising agencies old-fashioned and analog they call them analog agencies and all that sort of rubbish that you get and I, therefore agencies became obsessed with we've got to get the technology quite rightly I'm not saying you don't do this you do do this but I think in doing it they have sort of lost faith a little bit in the kind of the value of that big idea and putting it on TV or wherever and broadcast the hmm. value of broadcast and I was fascinated by that uh, little fact that Tess sent through to us about, you know, if you were an advertising agency and you had put something out on, on the net and you got 10 million global views, you'd all you'd be, be excited, jumping, yeah. you'd be jumping up and down going, this is fantastic, we've got 10 million views of this, this is absolutely incredible. The average commercial, average, you know, I'm talking average now, hopefully we're not producing average, average commercial in the UK gets 260 million views. Now, if you're building a brand, what the bloody hell do you think you should be doing? I mean, you know, I mean, Jesus, God almighty, you don't need to be a genius. Even the accountants should work that out. Um, but the trouble is, all they're doing is they're reading, you know, balance sheets. There's trouble with the account accountants, they just read balance sheets, they don't read books, they don't read, you know. 
culture. They don't really... I have to declare, my dad was an accountant. The accountant, you're an my accountant. My grandfather was an accountant. I just want to put in a word you broke, for accountant. You broke, you broke loose, though, didn't Some you? of my best friends. It's our accountant. <laughs> I do know a few He's an accountant, well. but he's really nice. I, I, I mean, but I they're think... They're running... The I problem is where I'm going to go, go that they're running companies now. Oh, sure, sure. And, the, you know, we have in our industry, we have procurement. Yes. Procurement has taken over. Procurement is saying, you know, I always remember John Bartle years ago, we'd won a piece of business and the, uh, we were pitching for it. And the client called up, uh, the potential client called up and said, it's fantastic, you, you know, we want to give you the bit of business and, and you are brilliant, you are far better than the other agencies, but you're more expensive. And there was this en enormous pause that John said, yes. Do you think there's a relationship between those two things? <laughs> and we're in a world now where, you know, it, what's happened is all, it, it's viewed by these people, and I'm sorry to have a go at, you know, number crunches, that all ideas are the same, and they are not. Uh, and that's where I, value I is created. That. It's a, a huge conundrum that we have. You're quite hard on your, own, on your own business. I mean... Uh, I, you're being a bit no, too I'd British, see, John. I'm being mean, very British. No, yeah. Fair enough. But to try and sort of see the glass half full, um, so at the same time, I think uh, I'm going to go back again to the past and to, to, to something people got completely wrong. Um, uh, this is less than 10 years ago. I, I, I first became broadcast, I joined the BBC, I was controlling BBC One. The prevalent feeling in the BBC was that the internet was going to conquer television, and those of us who were running channels were doing something quaint and old-fashioned that by now would probably be passed into history. And, and I can see why people <coughs> thought that, because it was shiny and new and, and it was different. But it's, you, you could equally say, the, actually, the opposite's happened. Television has conquered the internet. Mm -hmm. What people go on to the internet to do is to watch audiovisual content. That can include <laughs> advertising and programs. Perfect illustration of this. Just travel on a train. Go from London to Manchester. Five years ago, on a train, you'd have seen rows of people reading newspapers and books and things. It's just row after row after row of screens. It's, it's laptops, tablets, m you know, mobile, large, I have that Samsung phone, which frankly you can watch a movie on and it looks fantastic. Um, that's got to be good news because that is the stuff that we do. Mm. How we then uh, adapt to that world alongside showing people programs in the corner of their living room, uh, punctuated by ad, ad, advertising and so on. How we ride both horses, I think, is a massive challenge mm. to us. Mm. But I don't see any evidence at all that people don't have a very strong appetite for high-quality audiovisual content. And as I was saying, and I think that tape shows, shows that up, they want it to be high quality now. Yeah. They don't want it no, to look I... like shit. There mm. was a time in a kind of inertia of a small channel world when <laughs> you, you'd, you'd get a big audience to, to an indifferent program uh, you, you, because, because you know, they didn't even have a remote control, so they just watched the telly for the evening. Nobody's like that anymore. We're all promiscuous with our media consumption, um, but we still love it. We still mm. love stuff on the screens. Mm. No, I, I, I'm being hard on our industry for a very good reason. Is the audience we're talking to think we're not doing a very good job. No, and that I, is kind I of slightly, that. yeah, that's, yeah. Cl that's slightly serious. And I, I, I don't think, you know, I keep saying this, is, this isn't the elephant in the room, it's the bloody dinosaur in the room. Mm. You know, unless we answer this, unless we do something about this. Mm. You know, and clients are uh, therefore not creating uh, brand ideas that are transformative. They're creating average things, so agencies aren't doing their job properly. Therefore, they're spending less on those things, and, and it's a, a, a circle that's going down and down. It's a real problem. Well, well, I mean, to, to how be much fair, the most effective clients are doing Oh, that. yeah, they are. And they're I mean, they're yeah. the ones that are breaking free. And, yeah. you know, there is a wealth of evidence nowadays to prove that actually, uh, you know, going for the big emotional brand well, idea. Well, look at John Lewis. I mean, you know, every works. Christmas, John Lewis comes up, does a wonderful piece of advertising. Mm. Everybody raves about it, and, and their share price mm. it not only goes up, but their sales go up. And you kind of go, well, why aren't more people following that? You know, mm. Why do Tesco still do the rubbish that they do? Well, to be fair, they're trying, aren't they? Well, I hope so. Yeah. I uh, on, on that note, any questions from the audience? You must have uh, lots of questions for our esteemed guests. Now, don't be shy. Any accountants out there? Yeah. <laughs> the, the audience is full of accountants. I want names. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would love to write a book called Naming the Names, the yeah. person who said, you know, yeah. 
Who said shred to uh, Arthur Anderson? Mm. Somebody must have said shred, didn't they? <laughs> what, are you, um, what are you both most proud of that you have uh, produced over the last uh, year or so? And what is it about it that uh, uh, is particularly good? I, I, the, the, the risk of being very obvious, I'd say Broadchurch. I mm -hmm. thought Broadchurch mm. was uh, a fantastic series. And, and in a way, when you embark on a new series, you, you always want to get it as right as that. But they, they rarely come quite as good as that. And the credit for that lies with, not with us who commissioned it, you, you know, but with the, the, the people who made it, with Chris Chibnall who mm. wrote it, the brilliant producers at Qdos, the fantastic cast. In other words, to, for, for a program to come wholly good, you've got a list of boxes to tick. And it's quite a long list. And if, you, if there's only two or three of them not ticked, you won't get there. Mm. Um, and the, the very best, and I do think that's an example, mm. ticks them all. Mm. Um, so uh, it's a bit too obvious in a way, but yeah. Mm. yeah and on that point, I remember um, hearing you speak at Cannes, uh, John, you said um, the best advertising is 80% idea and 80% execution. And that's mm. probably equally, mm. equally true of um, uh, TV programming yeah. too. Well, I think we, what John mentioned something, which in television, in television drama, and when people say that we're in a golden age of television, they're, mm. they're, they're often referring mainly to drama. Mm. Um, uh, script, 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 script. In other words, if you start off with a script that um, uh, that, that is flawed, or, or you, you, you won't put it right by making it. Um, mm. the, the craft standards now in television drama are comparable to, to, to movies. Mm. That, that you, don't, you don't see them badly lit these don't mm. see them badly acted. The British actors are wonderful, wonderful actors. No, not Akon Antiques anymore. No, no. <laughs> so, so, you, you, well, that you know, was quite you, funny, you, wasn't you, it? I quite like yeah, that, 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 that had its tongue in its cheek. But you, you, so, so the craft values are really, really good. Yeah. Um, what we're all in search of is the killer script, the brilliant script. Mm. And uh, John, what are you most proud of? And, and is it about the killer script? Well, it, it, for us in advertising, it's always been that. I mean, the one phrase, you walk around an advertising agency and the, the, the most common phrase you'll hear is, so what's the idea? And we were built on ideas, built on mm. kind of that. And we're sort of, you know, attuned to making that really work. I mean, you know, what we... I, you know, I, I particularly like what we're doing with Axe at the moment because we're taking it and actually we're, we're starting the campaign with an idea... Uh, instead of the client coming to us and said, we've called the variant this, this year Pulse and then do something around it. We start with an idea and we build it out from that. And the, uh, uh, the, the Apollo uh, uh, spot that we did, well, a couple of spots we did, was built for a whole kind of uh, uh, media landscape. And it's been hugely successful. So I think that is an example of how you should be using media, mm -hmm. how you build it create something wonderful in broadcast and then take it through as a promotional idea all the way through to everything else. So I think that is an example of something that I'm particularly proud of. But I, I you know, there's, I mean, what I, the one of the things I do love, and I, and I think this is, a, again, a skill that we, we must hold on to. We were genius at taking complicated ideas, complicated thoughts, and reducing them down to a simple mm. single idea that impacted on people. And in a time starved world that's a real skill and we seem to be trying to lose it we seem to be trying to let's make things longer and longer and more complicated than that and this genius that we had it was a real skill you know it's mm. a real skill and uh, you did ask me to show one piece of oh, there was one piece of work and mm. it's a piece of work i love and it's kind of all life is in this and it's in 60 seconds you know and it's a sort of philosophy of everything really well let's uh, see that akil can you play the champagne champagne yeah please
So I think, you know, as a philosophy of, you know, not only communication, but a philosophy of life, you know, mm. there it is in 60 seconds. You don't need to read the Bible anymore. Just that's it. I've done it. You know, that's it. <laughs> Long book. I haven't got time anymore. You know, just remember that life is short. Play more. <laughs> also, I love it because not even, not even really, no, no dialogue, no music. No, no, no it's that, great. That's it. But that's yeah. a wonderful example of, so what's the idea? Mm. I'm, I'm going to, you know, and, uh, you know, you could describe that to somebody and then how you make it, how you put it together is mm. so crucial. And we went through a period, again, because, you know, there's a great line of uh, somebody that's not mine. It said, uh, we're all artists, it's just some of us shouldn't exhibit. Uh, and, the, <laughs> you know, because everybody can do everything, it doesn't mean to say they mm. should, you know. And I, and I do urge the creative people in our agency to become specialists, be a great writer, uh, be a great art director, uh, be a great designer, whatever, be great at one thing. We live in a world where everybody thinks they can do everything, and I, and mm. I think that's a huge mistake. Leave it to the experts. Well, you know, I mean, you know, Quentin Tarantino makes movies. There's probably a reason why he just makes movies, because that's what he thinks he's really good at, and that's what he's great. He doesn't do radio, you know, mm. he doesn't do theatre. It doesn't mean to say you can't do it, but, you know, anyway. Mm. Great. Uh, questions from the audience? Uh, brilliant. We've got one there, lady at the front. And oh, sorry, Zoe. Why don't you start there? As the oh. microphone's there anyway. And then Amanda, there's a lady in the front here. So do you want to, do you want to go ahead first? Sure. You? Just uh, Matthew. Your name, please. Matthew Sorry. Kershaw. Um, we've seen uh, TV, uh, British TV production, uh, you know, be world beating X Factor, Downton. Um, I just wondered, um, Sir John, do you think that Britain, going back <laughs> almost to the previous uh, uh, section. Uh, is Britain still a, a powerhouse of global advertising? Is, is that, are we underselling ourselves as, as an industry? Well, I think we still are. I think it's one of those um, double-edged swords in a way, really. I, I, I recently kind of said, I was saying at Cairn, actually, I think less and less global advertising is working. Um, and that's probably impacted our creativity here in the UK. That's maybe another reason why we're seeing less distinctive work. And, you know, I, I was fascinated to observe recently, because I'm chairman of a brewery, believe it or not, and uh, that overall beer sales in the UK are going down, and craft beer sales are, are rocketing. And I think if you looked at most <coughs> beer advertising, you would kind of probably understand why, um, that they're not investing in their brands, in being individual, talking, to the, to the people that they need to talk to, the cultural landscape. So I think we are. Um, I think we've been very successful at exporting our, our creativity, but in a funny way, it's having a, an adverse effect on our ability to create distinctive advertising that talks to an audience. Okay, there's a lady here in the front. Hi. Is this on? Yes, it is on, yes. I think, I think um, I, you know, I completely agree with you that this is the most exciting time to be in advertising. If people don't realise that or embrace that between nine to five, they really shouldn't be doing what they do. But I think, I think given all the challenges, and like you say in your recent book, that you know, the, the procurement and the number crunches are always trying to structure creativity because they don't understand it or they just think the creative guy is the mad guy or whatever. You know, I think, so when you've got the exciting times and then you've got the challenges, I think what's, what's interesting is if you were doing this again, would you right now set up an ad agency? And if so, what would be your focus from day one with your new team? Oh, that's, a, that's okay. a good one, isn't it? Would you next set, question while we are... What, would you set up, if you were starting today, would you set up an advertising? Well, I, 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 I sort of, I, I w probably would. Uh, and obviously what I would do, I wouldn't do much different actually, because I think what we set up in 82 is still right today. And we talked about putting intelligence with magic, and that's what we, we turn, turning intelligence into magic. Intelligence being, you know, uh, the number crunching, the analysis, all of those things that people talk about align to creativity. Uh, and I think that was the success of BBH. So I think it's still relevant today. I mean, it sounds an odd thing to say. It, you know, the fundamentals haven't, changed really really haven't changed and I think people often talk today about digital has revolutionized our industry I think that's wrong I don't think it has I think what it's done is it's liberated the communications industry and I think it's a different point and I would be going to clients saying this is how you do it um, and uh, the, the one thing I would do is I would try and stay relatively small uh, but because I think you know you can only work with maybe 10% of the market 
And do you think digital has liberated the TV industry as well, Peter? Um, I think it's more complex so, than that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, um, the te television to date um, is a great survivor of the digital age and is thriving, in fact, in the digital age. And there, there could have been reason to believe that that wouldn't have been the case. So, so you, the access to new devices, new channels is all adding incrementally to the amount of people watching television. Uh, um, I think the, 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 the challenging thing is to explore everything, short form, online, internet, uh, uh, viral, and so on, while still understanding the unique power of the mainstream, which is mm -hmm. what, what we're in. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, we showed the England-Uruguay match in the World Cup. Uh, and it peaked at, I think it was about 20 and a half million viewers. Mm. What's uncanny about that, if you think of the amount of change going, going, has been going on, it's almost exactly the same peak as the biggest game in the World Cup four years ago, England-Algeria, and almost exactly the same peak as the peak in the big England game in the World Cup four years before that. Mm -hmm. so, so there is there's almost dizzying change, and there's constants. Mm. And, and we, you know, we need to be there for the <clears throat> big national live event. And the audience hasn't gone digital for that event at all. They'll get around the telly again. And I, and I think they will in another four years and another four years. So how do you maximize the value of that and make great business out of it and great business you, you know, for advertisers as well, as well, whilst at the same time as you absolutely must, getting your content to all devices, all platforms, and indeed exploring all these new avenues that open up. That's, that's, that's mm. the challenge. It's quite mm. an exciting challenge, mm. but that's well, what we've got to do. The other thing, too, for advertising there is that you know, you're, you're having this phenomenon called second screen watching, which I think is incredible because, I mean, mm. again, that creates for a brand an opportunity to kind of almost comment on the game or become part of it or mm. participate in it. Isn't that fantastic? I think that's incredible. Well, we didn't really see coming that social media, far from, again, far from being mm. a rival to television, uh, would just go hand in hand in mm. television. In fact, it is the expression of the way people talk about television. You know, it's mm. a well-known statistic that in peak time, 40% of all tweets are about television viewing, saying, mm. I'm sitting at home watching Coronation Street. What do you think of it? What do you think of it? <laughs> Suddenly, the audience has come to life, and this is also a fantastic thing for us, um, uh, perfectly, by the way, um, encapsulated in the... Um, uh, the Channel 4 show Gogglebox, which is mm. a brilliant show. Yeah, we use it where all the time. Suddenly, <laughs> we can look at the, the audience, we can hear them, we can hear them talking. Even when I started as a channel controller, um, uh, which is only eight years ago, how did you hear the audience? Well, there was a thing called the duty log, which was people who bothered to pick up the telephone directory, find out the number of BBC viewer inquiries, ring up and say, well, I didn't really like the thing. <laughs> and, and then the next day, if you had time, there were reams and reams of pages of... <laughs> You know, people in Nuneaton, you know, saying that they didn't <laughs> like EastEnders that night. That's only about eight years ago. And mm. now we, we can, re Twitter, uh, you know, we can hear them. The, the research that we do, I was interested in listening to what you're doing, what you're talking about, John, where you are on research. I suspect you think research people are like accountants and uh, all bad. <laughs> they and, come and close. Inside, they come, they close. come very, they come very close. close. Um, but, but actually, where, where things go with television <laughs> research is that, frankly, it's just it's becoming like goggle box. Yeah. No, mm. just put a camera in front of them, yeah. find out what they say, and and and, and I, I actually believe in the value of television mm. research, and we, we use it. In, you know, it's a very useful thing. We, don't be a slave to it. Absolutely, yes. don't be a slave to it. Uh, Amanda, you had a question. Incredibly inspired and feeling suitably kicked up the proverbial for needing to go back and be more creative, even in a company that employs lots and lots of accountants and actuaries. Um, what would be, to, to my fellow clients and myself in the room, what would be your advice when we leave here this afternoon about how can we help that creativity? Um, that's a, a very good question. How can you, clients, how can you help? Creativity. How can you help? Do you know one of the things that uh, you know? And this is I, I'm being honest here. Over the years, I have presented uh, a huge number of uh, really, I have to say, this outstanding ideas to clients. I mean, and we've seen some of them, and they've all worked. I could count 
on one hand, the number of times when I presented those ideas, a client has said to me, hmm, John, how can I make this idea better? What I get is, John, that's a really, really good idea. You know, what it doesn't do is this. So immediately you're in a negative, a negative space. And I, I always remember when Whitbread were um, a beer client and, and they were being run by people like Anthony Simmons Gooding, they, they trained their, their marketing people that when they saw an idea, that what they did is they talked about what was good about it. They ultimately may reject it, but they talked about what was good about it. And I think we approach so much with a negative mindset. Because as soon as you say, hmm, it, I, I like it, but what I don't, you're immediately you're, mm. you know. I mean, you know, it, it, if you buy a Ferrari, you will notice it doesn't have a place for a roof rack, you know, and that's, you know, that's, <laughs> but, you know, look at it, you know, it's an amazing car. <laughs> and I think it, 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 that's what I would, advise you. Next time you see an idea, it's a really good idea. If it's a shit idea, you just say it's a shit idea, go and do another one. Uh, and they kind of know it, actually. Um, but what you can do is you can say, can we make it? How can we make this better? And you, will, you won't believe how motivating that is. Mm. Peter, any, any ideas? What, what do you do to uh, encourage, foster creativity? Build on it, improve it? Well, I, I, I think there's a difference in nature between what what I do and what John does here, yeah. because as a broadcaster, as a commissioning broadcaster, the thing that I say to my commissioning teams is make sure our doors are wide open. Um, all large organizations have a habit of putting their wagons in a circle and talking to each other. But what is a broadcasting channel? What is ITV? Um, it's a platform, it's a stage. Um, our stage is a big stage. We want to use the analogy, say, of the National Theatre. It's definitely the Olivier. It's not the, mm. you know, the shed, as it were. Mm. Um, so what we're looking for is to, to say to people, if you've got the ambition to put something on on this stage, come to us. Come to us first. We're in a very, very competitive market. We television commissioners think of themselves reasonably as buyers. We buy programmes. The first thing I say to commissioners is, don't think of yourself as a buyer. Think of this as a seller. You're selling ITV to people with hopefully brilliant scripts because we want them and then that'll be good for our audience. And, and so don't be over prescriptive. The, the, the commissioner who says, this is exactly what I want, will get back exactly what he or she <laughs> asked for mm. and then yeah. be disappointed in it. Yeah. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're there you know, to, if you like, gauge the interest of the audience on behalf of the audience. That's why, although we do use very sophisticated research, God, you've got to ignore it. Because research, if you ask the audience what they're looking for, they will basically tell you what they've already got. So we're looking for people who will, who will surprise, challenge that, um, push the envelope in one way or other, and we just want them to do it with us. Okay. That's Brilliant. It. And uh, on that note, I'm going to say thank you so much to thank our you. utterly stellar speakers thank for you. today. Thank Absolutely you. brilliant.